Thank you for joining me as I sit down with Pastor David and Marie Rosales from Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley, as we discuss marriage, raising children, and managing difficulties that arise in the family. We're ready to begin, so let's talk marriage. You know, speaking on that, Pastor, uh, would you be able to describe the different meanings of love that are represented in the Greek? Because I want to go somewhere with some of these different types of uh, love that are described in Greek. What, what are they, Pastor? Well, you know, uh, uh, if anybody's real interested, I believe that C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Four Loves. And uh, he does a, a scholar's job on, on the Greek and all of that. There, there are, you have eros, in, 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 which was a, a physical attraction, physical loves, erotic. You have storge, which is more of a fleshly kind of love. It's, it's not the deepest form of love, but it's a, a word that's used to describe it sometimes. Um, you have uh, agape, which is the highest form of love, and you have phileo. And phileo is, is, is the brotherhood or sisterhood, relational love. And so there are aspects of, of, uh, of love that are found in Scripture. The, the three loves that are most commonly used scripturally, though, are the eros and the phileo and the agape. And so uh, one of my professors said, whether this is true or not, I don't want to pass bad information on to, to our viewers, but one of our professors said that agape was really a, a word that was coined to express the kind of love that God had that was uh, almost, and I, won't, I don't want to uh, stumble any of my uh, scholars who, are, who may very well stumble across this, uh, I don't want to come off like a Greek scholar, I'm not, but my professor said um, that agape was almost an invented word to try and describe the highest form, the, the highest form of love, which is a self-sacrificing, self-giving love. Uh, phileo was the more common uh, friendship kind of love that you would have, and eros was the, the physical, the physical aspect, and it, it didn't even have to be quote-unquote a real love, is a physical drive that is consummated in physical activity. And so in marriage, um, the highest form of relational love should be agape, you know, because Jesus loved us and we're to love our, our, our wives as a man like Christ loved the church. And so the word agape is a, is a word that would be used to describe that, you know, which is the self-sacrificing, dying to self kind of love. Um, but at the same time, you know, Paul speaks concerning uh, not defrauding my wife. And when you speak about not defrauding my wife, that uh, he said, uh, if you separate it all, make it for just a time for prayer and then come back. And what's he referring to? You know, not playing checkers. He's talking about <laughs> physical love. He said, and, and the woman and the man actually have a debt to one another to, to fulfill that aspect of their their love relationship and and so Paul made it very clear that when when within the confines of marriage uh, sexual activity occurs it has been created to be pleasurable and it's intended by God to be enjoyed by those who are who are married not simply to have children because some can't have children but because it is the highest form physically physically of showing the intimacy that occurs between a man and a woman who become literally one in, in their activity uh, through intercourse. And so there's an actual uh, unity that goes deeper. And so there's that, there's that erotic love. But the phileo love, I, I would say that, that in my marriage with Marie over the years, you know, the, the phileo has been the most common one. It's the, the friendship, it's that, you know, again, we, you know, we, 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 we hold hands and we don't even realize we're doing it. <laughs> you know, it's true, you know. Mm -hmm. Or at night when I'm in bed about to go to sleep, I'll feel a little hand reach over and touch my hand as she goes mm -hmm. to sleep, you know. That's what she does. You know, that's just us. We don't think about it. And, and mm -hmm. that there is a friendship. You, mm -hmm. That's friendship, what we're doing here. This, we, we enjoy each other and we kind of, mm -hmm. you know, that's the way it is. And so... I would say if you asked, you know, what has been the, the, the thing that kept you together, uh, we're friends. We're friends first and foremost, but I love her with a, an agape love, mm -hmm. you know, because she's my girl and the other aspects of love that are natural for those relationships have been part of us. But if you said, um, what do you think is going to keep you going? 
And I'll give you an example of what I'm trying to say. What's going to keep you going when you're old and old and old? We're old now, but say God gives us 20 more years. You know, well, I saw a picture of an old man, he's probably 90 plus years old, and an older woman, his wife, and, um, and they weren't well. And, but they couldn't be apart from one another. Mm -hmm. And they were mm -hmm. in a room together, and, and she's in her little cot because mm -hmm. they're not well. And he's in his little cot. And, but they had to be in the same room, and they're reaching out across mm -hmm. that divide holding hands. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, uh, daughter-in-law, but she's my daughter, my Karina, said, I don't know if you're going to laugh at this. It's kind of corny. And, and I, my tears started for me. I said, that's us. And see, as long as I have her. And it's not sexual. It's not. If, if I got her hand, hmm. I'm in heaven. And that's, that's love, you know, that's friendship. And that's us. Mm -hmm. That's us. People see that, and that's us. You know, we need each other. You know, we need each other. And when I have everything with her, I'm free to love other people mm -hmm. because I don't have any agenda. I don't have an agenda. I'm, 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 she's safe and I'm safe. We're safe with each other so I can love other women deeply, but I don't have the same love. Mm -hmm. I have love only for this woman, that kind of love, right? And, and that's that, all built on our friendship. So which one of these meanings of love is difficult for a husband to practice? Well, I, I, I don't think he'll ever have problems with erotica. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he even thinks of that. <laughs> Eros? Are you kidding? No, I, I don't think Eros. Let's just throw that out right now. I don't think he'll ever have a problem with that. Um, I think that the the love that, that requires the deepest sacrifice is the uh, agape. Yeah, because that is dying to self. And you can be a selfish friend sometimes. Mm but you can't really love with agape and be selfish at the same time. So I would say that the more pure and the higher and the most holy is agape. And that's what you seek the Lord for. Agape love is the, uh, the mark of a believer. Mm -hmm. And agape love is evidence of God's Spirit's presence in your life. And so it's the fruit of the Spirit. And so... I would say that's the one to be pursued because when, when you do have the, the agape for your wife, when you have that, I'll lay my life down for you the way Christ did for the church, um, that's the highest form of expression that you can have. And so friendship has kept us together. It will always keep us together. Mm -hmm. Agape is what has made it deep. And it's made it uh, multidimensional. Yeah, so I would say agape is to be pursued, but it's expressed through your friendship. Would you say that in order to have the other, the phileo and the other forms of love in a marriage, that agape is the one that will allow those other ones to take place? Agape is the root of all other love. Um, so yeah, I, I, if if... If you walk in the spirit, then you don't fulfill the desires of the flesh. And so if you say, Lord, I want to be filled with your spirit and I want to express who you are to this world, well, who is, who is he if he's not a loving, caring, compassionate, sacrificial God, right? And so that's been my prayer. Um, I've said this to our church, John, perhaps you've heard, I don't know if I've said this recently. But the oldest prayer that I've prayed over the years, and it's been almost 50 years, it'll be 50 years in December that I came to faith in Christ. So it's almost 50 years of my life I have prayed one prayer consistently, and that is God teach me to love. Mm -hmm. And so fill me with your spirit, because I want to love. I want to be a loving person. Mm -hmm. And so that's the key. And so if I can't love this woman here who's given me all, she, she held nothing back, John. She's held nothing back. 
nothing, you know? I, I, I don't deserve that. So I asked the Lord, help me to, 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 to cherish and treasure that and to act the way that ought to provoke and be activity. Help me to act like I believe that. And uh, I hope she knows that. I think she does, you know, after all these years. I think she does. But that's what I do. And I think, what would I tell any man? You know, die to self and love your wife, you know? It's interesting how Paul doesn't command the wife to love the husband. But he says, husbands, love your wives, you know? You know, because Adam already had a job before he had a wife. He already was out there tending the trees in the garden. He was already doing fellowship with God. And so he's commanded to love her. It's interesting. It is interesting. She was created to love him. She was taken out of him and became his woman. But he already had other things going before he had her. And I suspect that there's some general truth in that with guys that get caught up in their jobs and their, their uh, hobbies and other things and neglect our wives. But to me, uh, and I've said this in church more than once, um, I, I've, I told my kids this too. I've said, you know, one day I, I won't be doing what I do. One day I'll be quote unquote retired. And I told them, I want to be ready I want to know this woman so I don't have to know who she is after I retire. And f because a lot of guys hide in their jobs and, and their hobbies and, and now they have no more jobs. And they're, 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 they can't play softball anymore and they can't do the things, their activities and their hobbies, bowling or shooting their weapons or whatever they like to do. And now they're sitting on a chair with this Woman, they don't even know. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah. And your wife says, you want some coffee? And you say, you like coffee? <laughs> you know, they don't even, they don't even know her, you know? Well, I made my mind up, you know, Bible tells us, Peter said, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. So I study her, you know, I, 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 I study my wife. She knows this. She, she says it. You know, you study me. <laughs> and I do. And I study. I watch her. I. I, 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 can, I can tell you, I can tell you pretty much everything I could know of all these years of studying her. I know my wife. I know my wife. And she'll tell you that. There'll be times she'll start t saying something. I'll say, oh, because, and she'll go, yeah. And that's, that's not mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. That's knowing your wife, you know. And the blessing is sometimes she'll say, uh, no, there was something else. And I, now I learned something <laughs> right. new. So all of that's good. And same same is true with her. And she, she knows me. And I'll look at her and I'll say, you think I'm going to say this, don't you? She'll go, yeah, I'm not. I'm saying something different today. Well, really, you know, new. This is new, you know, so. Well, Marie, if I were to ask you uh, from a woman's perspective, which meaning of love is it difficult for the wife to practice? If there is a difficulty in 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 the meanings that Pastor had given the eros, the phileo, and the sturgy. well, I would say I would say the sexual. I think women have a tendency. I think a lot of women would withhold from their husband um, because they get upset with them. I think I would say that's probably the most most. Most of the women have problems in in that area, I would think, because if they think that their husband's not loving them, then they're not going to want to love them. Right. It's right. a it's it's a it's it's a terrible thing to. Uh, what's the word? What's the word I want to? To bargain. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You shouldn't be bargaining. I mean, I mean that that part is not to be bargained, but I think that I think that many people do. Um, you hear a lot of uh, problems in that area. In that area, you know what's interesting is is uh, at least from a male's perspective, I can't speak on a female's perspective. It's funny uh, I've seen and I've heard also that there can be an argument between the husband and wife or a disagreement, and then you know then the husband's uh, ready to be intimate in some ways, and the wife's like, no way. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. that different connection where. 
men have can have the capability of just having intimacy uh, even after an argument where a woman's like there's much more involved for okay, yes. a woman and so there can be that disparity sometimes which yes. i find interesting yes. of having that uh, as well and it's very real i believe it's very real with the women they they uh, hold on to grudges <laughs> can and yet and that's they, they become argue. punitive mm -hmm, and they, they, they bargain mm -hmm. you know that does that happen the tick yeah. for tack or the yes. if yeah. you're going to do this i'm going to do that well if you didn't yeah. do this for me then yeah. I'm, or they I'm use their sexuality use to get it. something they want. That's true. That's very true. Because a man, a man, a man, normally, like you just said, uh, you know, a man doesn't even know, need to know the woman's name, <laughs> right? He doesn't need to know who you are, where you're from, anything. Mm -hmm. And and there was a time when women actually valued themselves enough to think that those things are important. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's sad, but sometimes women today uh, may not see the value. Uh, of what intimacy actually is. And in marriage, like what Maria is saying, of course, she's right about that. Um, yeah, women women can, because we hear this. We're ministers. Yes. I mean, we've been yes. doing this for a long time. These are these are things that people say to us. And, and Marie yes. can speak, uh, uh, you know, because she's spoken to hundreds, thousands over the years of women. And there's no doubt about that, that they use uh, sexuality as as a bargaining chip or they use the word uh, tell me I'm wrong on this one or they say I don't feel like it that's right no I don't feel yeah I'm... I don't feel like it a man's always going to feel like <laughs> it you know there's a difference between men and women you know <laughs> women say no I don't feel like it you know and then she punishes them yeah that's true you know or whatever you know Marie's had more than one conversation like that yes it's interesting how that and then the man cannot love her, and it, then she cannot kind of hold out at the same time, and so it starts this. Yeah, the man begins to feel like she's um, she's holding out on him, withholding from him, punishing Punishy. him, and then he'll go into whatever. Some guys will do this. They'll say, "I don't really need you," you know. I mean, there's someone on a street corner right now, or I've got somebody in, in on the job. I, when Marie and I first got married, I I had a job. Um, working in an office and and um I, I i as a younger man it's i you know people don't know me very well on a personal level they only know me as a pastor but somebody working on the job site you know it's kind of fr i was f a friendly person you know uh i like to say how friendly marie is because she is uh I, I am too though you know i'm the kind of person that you know I, I like to laugh and joke get to know people and when i was on the job site i did that and, and again, I'm a, a newly married man, and there's these two y young women working in, in an office, and I had to uh, interact with them every day, every day, because they were part of my department, right? I'm not thinking anything of it. And uh, I go walking in one day, and this one young lady says to me, um, my, my parents are gone. I was a young man then. Uh, my parents are gone for the weekend. And... And I live in Downey, and I at that time was living in Norwalk. I said, oh. She goes, yeah, I live in Downey. My parents are gone. Um, you ought to come and pick me up and bring me to work. And I looked at her, and I didn't say anything. I just kind of like I didn't. I. No, I didn't hear that. And she said, you ought to, yeah, you ought to, you know, come on over. And And the girl, her friend, said, did you hear what she just told you, you know? She's inviting you, you know, she made it very clear. And I looked at her and I, I said, uh, I said something or other. And I went to my desk and I thought about it. And later on, I told Marie, I said, I was hit on today, you know, and I was very uncomfortable with that. So like I said, from the beginning, I've told Marie these things. Mm -hmm. Well, John, that was when, uh, I was probably 25, 26, 26 years old. And so I planted our church. I was probably 31 or 32. And I used to stand in the back of the church at the end of services. And here comes this woman who had told me, did you hear what she said? And wow. she had gotten saved. Wow. And she's, she was going to Rawls Church uh, in West Covina and she says to me, do you remember me? Her name was Teresa. And I said, 
Oh, yes, I do. You know, how are you, Teresa? I just, she said, I heard you got saved. I wanted to come to see, or I heard you pastor to church. I just wanted to come and see if it was you. It is you. And I wanted you to know that uh, I gave my heart to Christ and I'm serving the Lord at, at Raw Reese's church. My husband, this is my husband, so-and-so. And I'm looking back at a few years and I'm thinking, if I'd have been a jerk, if I'd have been flirtatious, if I'd have acted interested, what would that have done? You Imagine, know? wow. What would that have done? You know, you never know. Mm -hmm. You never know. So it's, for me, it's always, you know, um, just pursue the wife of your youth and always be ravished with her love, like Proverbs says. If you can uh, finish this sentence, if you both want to share, friendship with my husband, wife means chili beans. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of chili beans, uh, this is a shout out. Those cookies were really, really good. <laughs> they weren't for you, John. I know. <laughs> My wife had to hide them. <laughs> they were so good. <laughs> what was the question again? If uh, friendship with my wife, or friendship with my husband slash wife means, for you to finish the question, finish that sentence. Just being with them. Mm -hmm. Just enjoying them. Anywhere you are, you're home. You know, Marie and I, it doesn't matter where in the world we are. As long as she's next to me, I'm home. So I'm complete with her. It means the world to me, friendship with him. And so, like he said, it's just we come home and that we're there. It's just, it's us. just us. Two old people. <laughs> <laughs> Two old people kind of rolling around a house banging <laughs> in each other. No, no. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> Marie, you know, as we were speaking earlier about... Uh, sometimes using the different types of love to hold out from the husband. Mm -hmm. Are there any repercussions when a, li a wife lays down her life for her husband only to receive approval from him? I would think so. I, I would think that there would be only to, see, to, to receive approval from him. I, I would think, I would think so, John. Um, um. Some of those things can be, I mean, I'm only doing it for him. I'm only doing it for her, which then doesn't, we're not doing it for the Lord right. anymore, right? We're, it's now become about that person and what they can give me. me. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a take, a mentality rather than a give. Right. Um, willfully, um, giving, lovingly giving. Yeah, I. Th th that's dangerous. That's a dangerous place to be. A give and take situation. Because as Pastor mentioned, what happens is potentially can open the door for. Well, if you're not gonna, you know, if, if you're not gonna give me what the things I need or the appreciation mm -hmm. I, then I'm gonna find. I'm gonna look elsewhere. Or exactly. And that can be dangerous. It, it, yeah, it, it it will be dangerous, if you if you live your life together like that, a give and take. Um, no, it's it's not about me. It's about him. Mm. The most yeah. important thing that you have to have in, in your relationship, and I know that Marie would agree with this, is yeah. a personal walk with the Lord. Yes. You know, yes. Um, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a, when a man is seeking to please the Lord, he can be a comfort in his home. Mm -hmm. And when a woman's, See, so Marie, Marie cannot, and she knows this, so I can, I'll can. i answer for her because I know this is what she's saying to you right now, and I'll say it my own way, but I, I think mm -hmm. I'm saying what she's saying. Yes. Um, Marie wants to please me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that she's supposed to, and I mm -hmm. want to please her too. But she knows that if she tried to always please me, she can't because I can change my demands. I can change what, what pleases me right now. You know, and, and so she'll always be trying to figure out what, what can I do to make him happy. But if she pleases the Lord first, if she pursues the mm -hmm. Lord, if she's in mm -hmm. the word with the Lord in prayer, in fellowship with God, has friends, mm -hmm. she's growing spiritually. And as she's growing, um, those are the things that make her fulfilled. 
And when she's fulfilled, she's able to give to me from that abundance, from that, not to try and make me, oh, do something in return, but because she loves doing this because it blesses my life. And I am able to see that she's not doing this so that I'll buy her a purse or take her to <laughs> dinner or, you know, whatever. I'll see that, you know, and and the same is true with her. Mm -hmm. We we learned this at the beginning. Uh, I, we were married as newlyweds, John. We were a month, two months, whatever, married. I mean, we're just freshly married. I still remember this. I've shared this again with the church. It's just something I've been open about. But I turned to my beautiful little, little girl, my wife, and, and I said to Mary, I said, you're so beautiful. You know, you're beautiful. I love you. She looks at me and she goes, what do you want? <laughs> you know, one of those women to a husband look like, what do you want? You know, And I looked at her and I said, Marie, I can sleep with you anytime I want. I said, we're married. And I said, I'm not, I'm not giving you uh, some kind of, a, you know, a, a play. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to seduce you. I said, I'm just, I said, I want anything except you. I said, that's what I want. You know, so she and I together, again, we were young. We were young at that time. Mm -hmm. We already knew. I already knew. No, I've already married to you. You know, I've got you available to me as a wife. And, and I also know that you're, you're, you love me. And so it's all okay before God. So no, I don't have to say you're beautiful. I don't. I don't have to. I'm, I'm, and, and, and I don't. You know, I just love you because I love you. See, so we we put away that bargaining thing a mm -hmm. long time ago. Yeah. We we did we we never really had that. That that's not one of the things that she ever needed to worry about with me. And I've I I don't think that way. See, that's not how I think. So I so that was clear when we first got married. Right, right. And that's that's important because my question, the other question would be. When a husband lays down his life for his wife and she doesn't appreciate how doesn't appreciate that, how is he to respond to that? Well, why is he laying his life down? For her, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> isn't that part of laying your life down even if she doesn't respond? Right. I mean, again, that's manipulation. You're really not laying your life down if you're expecting her. Something in something. return. Right. right. Yeah, that you're not right. you're manipulating. And her. you know, Pastor, sometimes and guys are gonna probably get upset with this but in that sense sometimes men can be the biggest babies about it and they can be well you know I'm laying my life down I guess it works both ways but I've I've met I've met with a lot of couples and there's this mentality where well you know what I'm laying down my life for her so hmm you know and, and I'm thinking wow you're laying your life shouldn't you be doing that anyways but I don't know that you're supposed to do uh, any man you know again you know uh, I don't want to make the men feel bad, and and I don't want women hitting him in the elbow in, with her elbow. <laughs> I've seen that right? when I'm teaching. <laughs> I've seen that when I'm teaching. I'll say something, and I'll see the woman turn and. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny to see that, and and it'll go all through the the through the church, you see, and the guys, you know, moving and everything like that. Okay, so part of being a man is uh, simply growing up. You know, and if you if you have a conversational relationship with your wife, where you're open, and and you say this is on my heart, you need to hear this, which is the way Marie and I are, uh, I will tell her that I will say, you need to sit down. We're going to have a talk, because I want to share with you what's on my heart right now, and she knows that it's time to put down whatever it is she's doing, and and well, I'm fit. Okay, I'll be right here, and I have always done that with her i am i am that guy that will say we're going to talk i'm not going to let this be something that gets between us mm -hmm. we're going to talk and it isn't i try so hard <laughs> <laughs> you know there have been times when i have felt that and there have been times when i have cried and i have said you know honey to be honest with you at this moment i'm feeling kind of used and I know that you're not using me, so I want to take responsibility first and foremost for even telling you that because I know you love me, but I need to tell you how I'm feeling right now because feelings aren't always fact, and this is how I'm feeling, and I need to hear from you so you can help me to feel some security in this moment that I'm dealing with some stuff. And that's how I am with my wife to this day. 
if there's anything that I need to talk to her about, we will talk. And I'm and I'm not going to be that uh, that that baby boy. The pouting, See, she, right? She yeah. already had four kids. She doesn't need five. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I think in in both cases that we expect our wives or our husbands to be mind readers exactly. and not having that conversation. You know, it's so important to be open like that. And so, uh, so the importance of sacrificial love in a marriage. You lay your life down, you love her every day. Mm-hmm. You wake Same up the way. next morning, you do it again. Mm-hmm. And then wake up the next morning after that, you do it and again. do it again. Mm-hmm. Unless she kills you in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you guys both for uh, spending time and, and speaking about the importance of friendship in a marriage and and for uh, spending time to Let's Talk Marriage. Love Thank it. you guys. Thank you. Thanks again for tuning in. Let's Talk Marriage is a ministry of Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley. If you've enjoyed this video, then please like and share it. We will see you again next week on another episode of Let's Talk Marriage.